talk about something that I believe is very, very necessary for us as Christians if we are going to succeed in this life. Now remember, we are talking about living the distinctive life for the past four days we've been learning about how to live the distinctive life. First of all, we learned on the first day that God has made us distinctive. The second day, we learned that we have been justified and approved to live the distinctive life. Third day, we learned that we have been anointed and empowered to live the distinctive life. So the question is that if this is how God has made believers, why is it that when we look into the church, and we look for the influence of Christians in the earth, it is lacking. This is what we are going to talk about this very afternoon on Lunchtime Sparks for our fasting period and also on Ingenious Words. So stay tuned. Invite somebody to come and listen. I know that as we listen, we will learn something new today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. We ask that Jesus, let your spirit brood over us. Let the spirit of understanding, O God, be given unto us. And even as we speak, O God, I pray that the Bible says that the entrance of your word gives light. I pray that your light will shine. The Bible said that, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness could not understand it. And this light became the life of men. I pray that as this light comes, it will become the life of men. May these words that are speak, that are spirit and life, May he bring about a transformation and a renewal in somebody's life this very afternoon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So precious one, as I said, I am speaking to you today on the disciplines of the distinctive life. The disciplines of the distinctive life. Have you ever wondered why that out of this over 7.5 billion people in the earth, we have only about just about a handful, not more than five billionaires who identify as Christians. Over, 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 over 2,000 billionaires in the earth and we have just about five or a little over five people out of these 2,000 people who identify to be billionaires. Out of the various manufacturing production companies in the earth, how is it that Christians are controlling so little resources? If God has given us such great opportunity and such a great privilege to live the distinctive life, why is our life not so distinctive in so many areas? And that is because of what I'm about to talk to you about this afternoon. Despite that God has made it so, when we read the book of Galatians, it says that the hair, as long as he is a child, he is given to a custodian who is supposed to watch over him. Until that point that that child grows up and is able to take the mantle and reign in life. And so we realize that a lot of Christians are not able to live their distinctive life because they lack discipline. They lack discipline. And this is the discipline I want to talk to you about this afternoon. So I'm going to, we are going to pick the disciplines, the lessons of the disciplines to live the distinctive life from the man Jesus and three other Bible characters. And I know that as we go through these things, it will be a blessing to you. The first thing I want to talk to you about living the distinctive life is the lessons that we can learn from the life of Jesus. Because we can all testify that Jesus Christ as a human being that lived in the earth, lived one of the most distinctive lives any man could ever live in the earth. His life was so remarkable. And for three years, he has made the most impact that after three years of living, that is when I say three years of living, I'm not saying that like he lived for three years, three years of working, let me put it this, after three years of working, the impact of his work is still felt today. What did Jesus get right? The first discipline I want to talk to you about are the lessons that we can learn from Matthew's Gospel chapter 4 verses 1 to 11. And in Matthew's Gospel chapter 4 verses 1 to 11, we see 
Satan come to tempt Jesus after a long after fasting for 40 days without food or water. He comes to Jesus and the first thing he says that if you are the son of God turn this stone into bread. And Jesus gives him a remarkable answer. He said that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of law of God. If we are going to be successful in living the distinctive life, the first discipline we must master is to learn to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Many people, are, they, they, they claim to be Christians, but they don't live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so if we are going to, this is the first discipline we have to master, to learn to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What is the implication of living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? It is the life of faith. It is the life of faith. It is the faith life. You take God at his word, trust him on his word, live by his word. Because he said it, you believe it is so. It is the faith life. And that is why in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that is the first discipline we have to master. The second discipline we have to master is that the Bible says that Satan, after failing to convince Jesus to turn stone into bread, said to him that it is written that he will give his angels charge over you. He will give his angels charge over you. And so throw yourself down from this temple and the angels will catch you. And Jesus said that you should not tempt the Lord your God. If we are going to live the distinctive life, we must learn not to tempt the Lord our God. You know, there's one thing that I've come to realize about many Christians, and that is that Christians, many people love to tempt God. We just love to tempt God. So you went to church and you received the word of prophecy, and the word of prophecy said that, you are about to travel to America next week. The Lord says, don't go. And that person takes the scripture and that person says that, you know, the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, I overcome every works of the devil. So I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, I overcome every work of devil and all his plans. And so you travel to America and you die. And people ask, why did he die? It is because many Christians love to tempt God. You are about to travel in a public vehicle. And when you stood at the station, yes, you know that that day you have an appointment. But as soon as you saw the bus, you had a deep knowing in your spirit that I must not board this bus. You knew that you must not. You didn't know how, you don't know how you know, but you just know that I must not board this bus. But then you say that, oh no, the Lord is with me. And the Bible says that he will bear me up. His angels will protect me. So I will go. Nothing, something will happen. And a lot of Christians are failing because they love to tempt God. So if we are going to live the distinctive life, we must learn not to tempt God. Tempting God is what the Bible refers to as the pride of life. We must learn to avoid the pride of life. Trying to see if God will do it. When we know clearly that he has, say, he has said that, desist from doing this. The third thing I want to talk to you about is, the Bible says that Satan took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and said that, if you will bow to me, I will give you all the kingdoms of this earth. And Jesus said to him that, it is written that you should not serve any other God except the maker. Only one God only one God. What does it mean? He's telling us that we must learn not to be enticed by the offers of this world. So many Christians have sold their dignity for money. So many Christians have sold their dignity and their integrity for properties in the earth. They, they circulated around the law just so they could have some extra cash somewhere, losing credibility in front of man, they bowed to Satan. 
they bowed so that they could inherit the riches of the kingdom of the earth. But do you not know that the scripture says that all things are yours in Christ? You know, Jesus was able to overcome Satan because he knew that the Bible says that in him, when we read Colossians, he said that all things were made through him and all things were made for him. So when Satan said that I'm going to deliver all the kingdoms of the earth to you, it was funny because it already belonged to him. He created it. Do you know that God has given you the earth? Yes, I know you need a car, you need a house, you need to stay in a good area, you need to live in a mansion. These are good things to have in life. But what are you going to give up in God to gain these luxuries in this life? If you are a Christian, if you are going to be able to live the distinctive life, you must learn not to be enticed by the glories that the world offers. The Bible calls it the last of the flesh. You must overcome it. Now, the fourth thing I want to talk to you about in the life of Jesus can be found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 29. Remember, we are talking about living the distinctive life. The Bible says that one of the characters that we see in the life of Christ, when we read Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 29, he said that, and he went into Mount Olivet to pray as his custom was. If you are going to live the distinctive life that God has assigned to you, dedicated to you, given to you as your inheritance, you need to learn to pray always. You need to make a custom of praying to the Father. It is very important. Now let me take you to the next Bible character that I want us to. So remember, we've talked about four things so far. We are saying that if you want to live the distinctive life that God has promised his children, the first thing is that you must learn to live by the word of God, which is the life of faith. The second thing is that you must learn not to tempt God. It is called the pride of life. The third thing is that you must learn not to be enticed by the glories and the pleasantries and the luxuries that the world offers. It is called the lust of the flesh. And the fourth thing is that you must learn to make a custom of praying. Now let's go to the second Bible character called the man Daniel. The man Daniel, we see his life in chapter 1, in chapter 6, and in chapter 7 in the book of Daniel. And these are the lessons. We are talking about the discipline. So whatever we are talking about, we are talking about things that we must learn to make habits in our life. So the first thing we see in, in the man's Daniel's life in chapter 1 is that the Bible says that he is brought as a captive into the court of the king and he's offered the food of the king. But Daniel and three of his friends refused to eat the food of the king. The question we ask is why? Why is that the reason they refused is because the food was food offered to idols. The king's food was first given, offered to the idols and served on the king's table. So the first, the fifth thing that we have to know is that we must learn not to eat the food offered to idols. How do I mean? Christians love to double. What do I mean by double? You see, he goes to church, but then he loves to visit the shrine. He goes to the festival and he goes into the family home and he goes to eat the food that has been presented to the God of the family. And he says that I'm a Christian, nothing will happen to me. We love to double. He is doing business. He says that the business that I'm doing, God, church alone and business alone. As for this one, I need help. And the help I need, only, only the spirits of this earth can help me. So then they go and take chance, amulets. If you are a Christian and you want to live the distinctive life, you must learn not to eat the food offered to idols. There are so many people who claim to be doing the work of God, establishing churches all over. Yet when you go into the, the reality of their establishing the church, they have things buried in the church that God did not utter. They have human beings buried in the church. They have animals buried in the church. They have amulets buried in the church. And they claim that they are doing signs and wonders. But the power that they are using is not from the God of heaven. 
they are doubling. They are eating the food offered to idols. If you want to live the distinctive life in Christ, learn not to eat the food offered to idols. The sixth thing I want to talk to you about is prayer time. You know, I said that when we read Luke's Gospel 22, Jesus said that, it says that, and as his custom was, Jesus went into Mount Olivet to pray. And in Daniel's Gospel chapter 6, we read that a law has been passed in the land of Babylon, preventing anybody in the land from making prayer to any god for 30 days. The person who breaks that law is at the peril of death. He will be thrown into a lion's den. The Bible says that after the decree was passed, Daniel went and opened his window. And as his custom was, he prayed three times a day, looking into the window facing Jerusalem. You have to make a habit of praying. How many times do you pray in the day? Do you have a scheduled time for praying? You need to make a habit of praying. Schedule a time to meet the Father and know his mind. The seventh thing I want to talk to you about is that Daniel fasted. When we read Daniel's gospel, uh, the Daniel's book, uh, Daniel chapter 7, we learn that Daniel had a vision and he could not understand the vision. So to make sense of the vision, he went on a fast for 21 days. Do you have the habit of fasting? You see, be, to discern the things of God sometimes... You must deny the flesh of its pleasures. So you must make a habit of not just praying, but you must make a habit of fasting. Now the third personality I want to talk to you about is the man David. David was a remarkable man. But David in the Bible is known for one thing, worship, worship, singing songs of adoration to God. If we are going to live the distinctive life, we must learn to worship and praise our maker. There's a hymn that says that, I will praise my maker whilst I have breath. 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 18 to 20 tells a story of David after committing adultery with Bathsheba. The Bible said that the baby that was conceived, God said that the baby would die. And when David heard that the baby would die, the Bible says that for seven days and for seven nights, he neither ate or drank, but he fell flat on his face, not taking a bath, pleading for mercy that the life of the baby might be spared. But when we read 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20, the Bible says that in the verse 19, the Bible said that David saw that his servants were whispering and he perceived that the child had died. And the Bible said that when he saw that he rose up, went to wash down, anoint himself, went straight into the temple of God and began to worship. What do you do when you hear the bad news that you have been fired from your job? What do you do when you hear the bad news that you just lost a contract? What do you do as a child of God? You must learn the habit of praise and worship. And it's not only when you hear good news. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 6 that when David was bringing the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into Jerusalem, David danced before the ark. He danced so greatly. He danced with uncontrollably that his wife was ashamed for him because he danced to the point that all his clothes fell off. Can you do a wild dance by yourself? I know you don't know how to dance, or I know you know how to dance, but can you give a dance to God for his goodness, for his mercy? If you are going to learn to live the distinctive life, you must learn the art of praise and worship. Now, the fourth Bible character I'm going to talk to you about is the man Abraham. The promise that you and I are enjoying today is because of Abraham. The Bible says that, and God said to Abraham, in your seed, in your seed, that seed, the Apostle Paul makes us understand is Jesus Christ. So Abraham was the one that received the promise of the distinctive things that God was going to do for his children. How did Abraham live? 
if you look at the life of Abraham, one, the, one key habit stands out. Abraham knew how to raise altars. Altars. What is an altar? An altar is, is a monument of prayer and sacrifices and offerings and covenants. When we read Genesis chapter 12, Abraham hears God's voice for the first time. And what does he do? The Bible says that he built an altar to God for the promise that he had received. When we read Genesis chapter 13, verse 17 and 18, after Lot had departed from him, the Lord comes back to him and re-echoes the promise. And the Bible says that Abraham built an altar. When we read um, Genesis 22, verse 9, also, when he had received Isaac, he offered him up on the altar. Why do we need to raise altars? It is because in the spirit realm, whether you believe it or not, sacrifices and offerings is what distinguishes a man's life in the earth. I know that maybe you are a naturalist. You don't believe that spirits exist. But we all know whether you believe or not, they are there and they are working. And if you need to have influence in this earth, you need the backing of these spirit. And one of the ways to manifest the promises that you have received in the spirit into the manifest realm of the earth is through altars. And in the altar, remember I said, we give sacrifices, we give offerings, we give seeds. The altar is the symbol of covenant. The altar is the symbol of memorials and it is a symbol of remembrance. Child of God, if you are going to live a distinctive life, you need to master these disciplines. The last one I want to talk to you about is we go back to the life of Jesus Christ. You must learn the discipline of rest. Some people are working like dogs, never having rest. Your body will break down. If you are going to live the distinctive life and enjoy life to the fullest, you must learn to rest. When we read Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 38 to 40, it talks about Jesus after doing ministry for a long time, praying for the sick opening the eyes of the blind. The Bible said that they were crossing the Sea of Galilee and the storm arose. The man was so tired, he slept. Child of God, learn to sleep. Until you have learned to sleep, your body will break down. Irrespective of the promise of God in your life, you will die before your time. You must learn to rest. These are the disciplines of the distinctive life that I am sharing with you. And I know that as you and I, we take these things and begin to live by them. I'm not talking to anybody. I am talking to Christians. These disciplines is not for the people of the world. I am talking to the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because remember, we are talking about living the distinctive life in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit and His power and His anointing. And if the promises of God to live the distinctive life are going to become real for you, you must learn these disciplines. You must learn to live by the Word of God. You must learn not to tempt God. You must learn not to be enticed by the glories of this world. You must learn to pray without ceasing and you must learn to fast. You must learn to schedule your praying time. You must learn to do these things repeatedly day by day. You must learn not to eat the food offered to idols. You must learn not to dabble. You are a Christian but you are a thief. You must stop using human schemes to, to generate wealth. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that it is God that gives us power to create wealth. You must learn to fast and to pray. You must learn to worship and praise. You must learn to raise altars. You must learn to give offerings. Look into the Bible. How did Solomon become Solomon? The Bible says that 
he sacrificed over 200,000 sheep on the altar of God. That day, when he was dedicating the temple, he sacrificed over 200,000 sheep to God as a burnt offering. You don't know the power of sacrifice on the altar. Do you think that witches and wizards, they just do the things that they do? No. Your name is an is an on is on an altar charged to this. Why is it that when somebody goes to the shrine, they ask him to bring a sheep, a fowl, a cow, or a human being? Sacrifice on the altar. It is called the mystery of the blood. You must learn. I'm not saying that go and kill a chicken and pour it and say that no, that's not what I'm talking about. For us as believers, our sacrifices and our givings and our offerings and our seeds comes in various forms. And I know that because you are a believer, you know what I'm talking about. You must learn to sleep. The Bible says in the book of Job that because we are busy in the day, whilst man sleeps, the Lord comes in a dream, in a vision of the night, and he seals his instructions in our heart. One of the best ways to hear the voice of God and the instructions of God is when you sleep and when you rest. When your body is at rest, God is able to minister to you. And these are the things that I want to talk to you about this afternoon. If you and I will master these things and make a habit of them, we will see the hand of God distinguish us in the world. When we read the book of Daniel, in Daniel's Gospel chapter 6, I want to read that and I'm going to bring my lesson today to an end. Daniel chapter 6. There is so much the Lord wants to do for us, people of God. There is so much the Lord wants to do for us. Daniel chapter 6. We read in Daniel's gospel chapter 1 that Daniel, God gave Daniel and his friends. Let me read Daniel's gospel, Daniel's, the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. Then I'll go to chapter 6. He says that chapter 1 verse 17, Daniel. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And to Daniel, he was given the additional ability to have understanding in all visions and dreams. Remember, we talked about that on the second day of our fast when we talked about justified and approved to live the distinctive life. Now, when we come to chapter 6, because of what gave them in chapter 1, this is what happened in chapter 6. The Bible says in Daniel's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, that it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that princess might give account unto him, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit was in him. It is that excellent spirit that distinguished him. It made him live the distinctive life. Why? Because he had received an unction from the Most High. Even as we talked about yesterday, the anointing that the Holy Ghost gives us, gives us an ability to live the distinctive life. What is your habit? In the day, how do you spend your day? How many minutes do you pray in the day? How many minutes do you spend in the Word of God in the day? How many times do you worship God all by yourself? Not when you go to church and they are doing praise and worship by yourself. Have you ever danced to God by yourself in your room? 
Have you ever sung, even though your voice is not nice, have you ever sung to God by yourself, blessing him, thanking him, appreciating him? People of God, it is time to acquire new habits if we are going to live the distinctive life. And I know that as we are acquiring these new habits and we are living by this new habit, we will see the hand of God distinguish us in the earth, distinguish us among our peers, distinguish us in our family, distinguish us in our nation, distinguish us in our workplace, distinguish us in the community we find ourselves, distinguish us in the church that we worship. When we begin to make be, we begin to put these habits into practice. We will see that the Lord and His Spirit and His anointing in us will make our life distinctive. The Lord bless you. This has been Lunchtime Sparks and this has also been Ingenious Words. I know that we usually do 10 minutes, but pardon me, today is a special edition because of our fasting. But I pray that these words have blessed you. And I pray that as you press on, remember, don't eat the food offered to idols. Remember, do not bow to Satan. Do not give in to him. Stand for God. Live by his words. And his glory will arise on you. Remember what the scripture says. Arise, shine, for the glory of our God is risen upon you. His glory is risen upon you. So don't let it die. Work with him. Acquire the habit and live the life of Christ. Shalom. God bless you. Remember, 6.30 p.m. we will have our special session on, on Google Meet. And also 12 a.m. today, we are having our burning cycle. Don't miss out. It's going to be wonderful. The Lord bless you. I pray that we will all learn these disciplines and give testimonies to the goodness of God. Shalom. Bye-bye.